Hello fellow adventurers, explorers, and those who wander. My name is Chris and I am your guide. And today I am, well, dealing with a little misty rain today and I am at the Central Florida Fairgrounds for Orlando Maker Fair. Now, if you don't know what Maker Fair is, basically, it's hard to explain. It's basically, it's, it's like gathering the people who make and create things and they show off their wares and they teach you how to do stuff. But let me do this. Let me read off from the uh, official uh, Orlando Maker Fair website and give you an exact idea. So Maker Fair is a gathering of fascinating, curious people who enjoy learning and who love sharing what they can do. From engineers to artists to scientists to crafters, Maker Fair is a venue for these makers to show hobbies, experiments, and projects. We call it the greatest show and tell on earth, a family-friendly showcase of invention, creativity, and resourcefulness. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna look around, look around a little bit. Um, I know they have like uh, some robotic stations there. I know they're doing some 3D printing. Uh, they have a place you can go learn how to solder if you wanted to. Um, it's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. I've done them in the past in Nashville and it's, it's a little nerd paradise. So we're gonna go check it out. All right, let's go. All right, we're in Welcome Makers. So yeah, we already kind of see they got some artists here. This is an awesome boat that somebody built. We're gonna look at all kinds of different things, all kinds of creativity. It's, it's gonna be pretty great. Okay, so we got in the first building here. It looks like this is kind of a hands-on area. So over here, you can make your own shirt. On the opposite side, you can make your own button to put on the shirt. And then this is the coolest thing right here. They're doing like Pinewood Derby races. And you gotta check out this track. It's pretty amazing. This is a serious, Okay, race track. That is fantastic. I think he's gonna run. Oh. Okay, this guy's gonna run. Let's watch him. Oh. That's called, um, yeah, that's a crash. Over here, basically they have kids stations uh, set up where they can decorate the cars all they want, and then they test them down the track and crash them. It's pretty cool. Let's see if we can catch a couple more that are gonna crash. All right, we're lining up for our next contestant. Getting them ready. Got two in the slot. Are we all ready? Thumbs up. Ready, three, two, one, go. They mostly made it. They made it the first hump. That's a good, a good track record. Nice job. Okay, I found this thing right here, which is the coolest thing, and talks to every 12-year-old out there. Sponsored by the Orlando Science Center is Take It Apart. They have all these things, oopsie. They have all these things set out that you can literally take them apart and see what the heck. My 10-year-old me would have been like in heaven. This is all fantastic. And no repercussions after you take them apart. This is great. See, this is great. They have bins upon bins of victims. I mean, uh, things you can take apart. That is awesome. This is so cool. It's nice because it's educational. So here's how to not beat up your tools. These are, yeah, these Phillips have uh, seen some days. So don't do that to your screwdrivers. And this sheet is the absolute best. It tells you what all the junk inside is. This is amazing. Does everybody remember your resistor colors? Seriously, that is the coolest thing I've seen. Like I said, I've been to a couple of maker fairs in Nashville and they never had anything like that. I think that is just so great for the kids to be able to take it apart and understand all the parts and what they do. That's, that's really great. All right, uh, moving on. So over here at the make a shirt area, they're basically showing people how to do silk screens, which is awesome. Basically, you screen your shirt. They have a, obviously they have a preset screen for you. Then they got the press irons over there for you to finish them off. That's awesome. Ooh, they're letting me come backstage and see all the inkies. So yeah, if you've never done silk screens, basically 
Basically, like that's a screen. That's a mesh, basically. And then they have a uh, almost like a film, which is knocking out the image. And then you basically take. He's spreading ink on there right now, fabric ink. Doing a few passes, make sure it's really filled in well. And then we're gonna do a little lifty action here. Oh, one more pass for good luck. And then lift it up. And you got a shirt. That's awesome. So the ink's called plastic solid. It's only gonna set under like under the 350 degree heat that we have it at. Okay. So uh, it's like anti seize. So the second you touch it, it'll keep spreading everywhere. So we gotta keep an eye on it. So that's why like, we kind of do a preset there so that it doesn't botch up and get everywhere. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so the ink, if you don't set it immediately, it'll just start spreading everywhere. Yeah. And it'll, it doesn't drop. So, like, we can, we'll probably leave these overnight with some ink, and it'll still be ready to go in the morning for for tomorrow. Wow, that's remarkable. Because I know, because I've done some silk screening in the past, and you had to screen that, clean that screen almost immediately because yeah. they would gum up and everything. So, yeah, I mean, we had to clean the screens because it sometimes just gets caught up in the in the meshing there, and it doesn't like come through all the way. Right? Yeah. I mean, I've done this before, so you can. Uh, I'm a bit seasoned with this, so. Um. So here you go. He's getting ready to heat one. Now this is gonna set the ink. You said, right? Yep. Perfect. fun like you get to make your own little memento of the of the weekend so all right let's uh keep going let's go let's see what the buttons are like over here of course at maker fair you have to have all the lego it just makes sense i wonder if they're gonna cover this whole thing at one point that would be amazing so over here making buttons you choose what decorations you want or what pattern and then you bring it over here and they oh you can color it Decorate it as you want. And then they finally bring it over here. And they give it a press. Alright. <laughs> now one more time. Alright, awesome. It's like they got a little assembly line going there. It's pretty cool. This is just one building, so let's go to the next building, which they have labeled as Spirit, and uh, let's see what's going on there. And we have today's winner of Best Hat at Maker Fair. <laughs> so apropos. Thank you, sir. Sure, no problem. Okay, so a little darker in this area, at least. So this is more the tech booth uh, of Maker Fair. So we saw a kind of very basic um, creation, stuff like that. That's the Robot Wars, which we're gonna check them out in about a second. But, uh, yeah, over here, they have everyone's favorite droid walking around. They got Robot Wars. We're gonna check it all out. Hello, R2. Universal has a fun photo op over here, set up, uh, advertising the uh, new Mario, or I'm sorry, Nintendo World that's getting ready to open up over at Univer uh, Universal Hollywood. And then in two years, we're getting one over here at Universal Orlando, so it's gonna be super awesome. Hey, it's Mario! So we're over here at Universal, and they have these, which are the coolest things, little beating hearts, but it's not the badass thing, the fact that they're beating hearts, it's the fact that they're, they're edible beating hearts. That's amazing. Basically, they're like gummy material, and there's like a little Hello. ballast tube Hello. underneath that's blowing air and making them pump. Okay. Yeah, they had these available during uh, Halloween Horror Nights so you could uh, have them and eat them, and that's amazing. Okay, this is pretty cool. So, you know Minecraft, right? This is basically created the Magic Kingdom in Minecraft. That is brilliant. This is amazing. So this is Ryan and Darren yeah. with MC Parks. What is going on here that looks amazing? Yeah, so we are a Minecraft server that recreates theme parks at a one-to-one -one scale in Minecraft. So we Wait, one-to-one? One-to-one. One -to -one. Every Minecraft block is a cubic meter, and so using that, you can go into Google Earth, you can look at satellite imagery, and you can triangulate where everything's supposed to be and how big it is. That is me 
Continental. So, uh, how many parks have you done so far? We got Walt Disney World, all four parks there, and Disney Springs. Uh, we have Universal Orlando Resort. They have three parks and some of their resorts. Okay. Uh, the Disneyland Resort. We've got Tokyo Disneyland in the works. We got Disneyland Paris in the works. Uh, Busch Gardens, Tampa. All kinds of awesome parks. That is insane. Yep. And Holy! Over 100 open attractions as well. It's all the rides work. So, how, so if you were say a Minecraft player, how would you access this stuff? Uh, so, uh, Minecraft Java Edition version 1.12.2. Okay. Uh, you can join us at main.mcparks.us, uh, or you can join our Discord server to talk to us. Discord.gg/mcparks. Okay, so give give us some realistic timetables. So, like. Magic Kingdom alone. Yeah. What is the timetable to get that thing built? Yeah, so we've been around since 2013, so just about 10 years now. Um, but our current Magic Kingdom, we started building it in early 2015, and I think we launched it to the public in late 2016. Okay. Uh, once it was fully done. Um, but everything's always an iterative process. It's not like we're just building it, finishing it, shipping it out the door. There's lots of iteration that happens. Yeah. Whenever something happens in real life, we're updating things and making sure it's current. Um, so you're not done tr building Tron either? Oh, no. Okay, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Taking us five years. <laughs> <laughs> that is simply amazing. Yep. Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to grab a card for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. This, yeah. this is amazing what you guys do. Yeah, yeah thank time. you so much. Appreciate that. This is just mental. Wait, do you have lighting in all the... Really? This is happily ever after, so every effect works in the right position at the right time. That is insane. It's all synced to audio. Of course it is, because why wouldn't you do it that way? That's amazing. Okay, I found an area for the serious old school nerds. Let's see what we got. We got a Commodore 64 here. We got something I don't even recognize. It's super old, but... This is amazing. Right, TI-99. TI Currently trying to get it on the TV. Trying to remember what I had in school, like a TRS-80 or something like that? That was pretty popular. That was, yeah. That, I'm not showing my age or anything like that, but still. <laughs> this is so cool. An Amiga, holy crap. I used to have video toaster and ran it on that one of those things. That's amazing. And of course, for all the Apple fans out there. This. There it is. I had one of these when I was a junior in high school. That sounds about right. There was a game I used to play all the time, like as a kingdom building thing, and it was fantastic. Loved it. Spent way too much time in the computer lab. Yeah, this is crazy. There's actually, um, I'm going to show the information. There's actually a Florida Retro Computers Users Group. So you can go and like meet people who are into like wicked old technology when like an 8 meg uh, floppy drive was unheard of. This is so cool. If anybody is interested, they got their meetup and Facebook groups here available. But it's so fun. I'm not entirely sure what is going on here, but I really like it. They have a section here, like all this old modular synth stuff from back in the day. So when you're ready to make your next Philip Glass album, you're all set. Yeah. There was a day when this is the only way you can get past signal from one instrument to the next. These little TT cables. Actually, they're not even TT. They're smaller than that. That's amazing. Hook your eye. Hook your eye. Uh, 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 uh. How about this? How would you like to play Retro Donkey Kong on an actual barrel? These are great. Get ready for your next year's uh, Halloween display. This guy's so sparkly. So sparkly. Oh, this is cool, like a little, uh, little maker thing. Huh, I wonder what this switch does though, hang on. Hey, can you read the switch? Oh yeah, don't tell me what to do. Alright, knock it off. 
profit. Ah! Who keeps touching the switch? You? Sorry, sorry. I just, just back away. Just back away. Oh, I think these are great here. Hang on. I love it. Can you name all the actors? Okay, that all is amazing, but we're gonna watch some robots fight. Let's go! The wheel on the ground cannot be good. Fighting League is amazing to me. It's like, here, we're gonna pay all this money and do all this engineering to build this amazing robot to beat the hell out of it. It's great. I love it. So it seems just like with boxing or wrestling, they have different weight classes. So they have sportsman class, they have hobby weight, they have beetle weight, which is a bug, like bug size, and ant weight. I gotta see what ant weight is like, because that sounds like it would be super micro tiny. And of course, if you just don't want to watch, you can get a shirt and build your own fighting robot. They got all the parts here for you. This is so cool. Okay, this is funny to me. So, for charity, you can actually bid on some of the damaged robot parts. It's like a weird kind of souvenir. I like it. This is cool. So they have some robots back here that you can look at. These are so, I guess these are built from different schools in the area. Yeah, high school robotics team. Look at that. So this is for the lazy kids who don't want to carry their books to school. They just have this going from class to class. That is so cool. I like the little toaster. That's the best. And I, and I guess that's the dodgeball ro ball, robot. Well, um, the game design this year was to shoot into goals that are eight feet off the ground as well as playing monkey bars for points. Okay. And since we just competed 3v3, okay. while our teammates at the Smitho here would be shooting from the top portion, we would be defending the other robots on the opposing ball. That is so cool. I love all these guys. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So this is the kickball robot apparently. He pitches to you while you kick it. Perfect. I mean, it can do that. It's meant to launch the ball from top. But it's the launch at the top. It's like an eight foot. I think, I think it's eight foot high. Really? Yeah. Eight or nine feet. Will he do that today, or is he kind of taking a break? No, we don't have the correct uh, set piece here. And also, I don't want to pelt the crowd. Even though that would be hilarious. It would be, I'd love to, but I think we'd lose sponsors if we did. Yeah. I, they don't care for people being injured. No. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, like I said, a lot of Maker Faire is about education and like getting the next generation to be excited about innovation, robotics, and things like that. So what those high school kids are doing is just so great. And like high school-based programs. What a world! Okay, this robot is super intimidating. I love it. Of course, this is my favorite section of Maker Faire. I always love this guy. I see him at WonderCon or MegaCon also. I love the fancy R2. He's a fancy droid. But they're all fancy. 
Okay, this is really cool. I love this paint scheme. It's like it's all the primary colors and then some. And of course, then they have Jawas. All right, pose. Say Utini. Brilliant. <laughs> so the Mandos, the 501st are all in full form here. Awesome. Ah! Careful, I don't know where that thing's been. So many Mandalorians. So cool. Yeah, this is very much like uh, Megacon. Like all the different displays. You got the makeup guys doing their thing, showing off. That's terrifying, okay. These are also some of the people who just amaze me. That they're prop builders and painters of miniatures and all the things. I love all this. Yeah, there's a lot more prop stuff than I expected to be here. So, yeah, look at this table right here. This is amazing. Unfortunately, the frame, frame rate's not quite right, so it just looks like a spinny thing, and that's it, so. Like one of the bigger Yeah, these are fantastic. It wouldn't be a con without all the, uh, the steampunk stuff, of course. Love this. So would this be Brass Man? Sure, why not? Okay, this is something I can 100% relate to. So they get all the paints and they're painting all the minis. Let's see if we can get some close-ups of some of these guys. I love good mini painting. This guy is great. These guys are so great. Trying to get a couple of them in focus. Any D and D people recognize all these guys? <laughs> if you know me, I just have an incredible love for Japan, having been there several times, and so this table is perfect. It's Gateway to Japan, where they're teaching origami to all the kids. That is so great. I'm super tempted to jump in. This guy is great. He's like printing and building like all kinds of armor, which is that's just so great. I'm guessing this is all EVA. Yeah, this is EVA foam. It's so beautiful. Some of the work that these guys do. Yeah, it's like this is so cool. This one that I showed a second ago. I got it on display here. Then they have this whole book right here on how they built it. Progress and painting and that is so great. Oopsie. That is so fun. See, this is so cool. This, so this is all foam. This feels like nothing, by the way. And basically you get this foam. He gets it from uh, Bink Art Supply. And then you cut it, shape it, use heat, texture it a little bit. And then what he does, he does a coating of plastic dip, plastic dip to seal it. And then he told me this is a primer he, he found at um, Hobby Lobby. It's a metallic primer. One coat, and this is what you get. So this is like an air spray. So I don't want to do that. That is so amazing. Another great prop builder who I actually saw these guys at Megacon also. Rob Paulson. This one's for you, buddy. I like to scratch his tummy. How many of you get the reference, I wonder? Okay, so I've done this joke at Megacon also, but... You know uh, you're terrified right now. I know I want to run. Okay, so once again, they're not just showing this stuff, they're showing you how to do it. So, to fake metal, you got the foam, you got details, you prime the foam, you paint the foam, you add some silver to the foam, like here on the edges. And then you add the, the goop and the grime. And you end up with this guy. 
This is cool. So if you want a fake stone, yeah. Oh, so they do a little solder, kind of cutting the edges. And same thing with the solder, gets a little more damage into it. Oh, heat gun, okay, yep. Kind of just distressed a little bit more. Paint it in primer. Use a sea sponge. Okay, so they're doing a stippling thing on here, which is awesome. And then same thing uh, with a toothbrush, you kind of do a spatter thing. Kind of like, once again, just stippling and add a little texture and stuff. That is so cool. Okay, I think this has to be my favorite walk around that I've seen so far today. Yeah. Yeah, this is made of all the foam that I showed you earlier, but that is so, so cool. A lot of amazing work in goes into it. Okay, I could stand there all stinking day, but there's more to see, so let's go find some more. Okay, just when you thought you saw everything, now they have racing between belt sanders, because why not? It's cool. They have some like souped up cars here also, and I can't help but think of my friend Ed with all this stuff. I don't know cars, but it looks nice. So here at Maker Faire, they have steam roller printing, and it's pretty much what you think it is. heading to the Opportunity Building, which seems to be sponsored by Skycraft, by the way. Best electronic parts store in the, in the frickin' area. If you need parts, this is the place to go. They're amazing. And they got the spaceship. All right, let's go in. Thank you. So what is all this now? So this is uh, Blue Origins Club for the Future. Uh -huh. We're a non-profit organization uh, uh, underneath Blue Origins umbrella. Yeah. Uh, we have a mission to have millions of people living and working in space, and that's going to start with the younger generation. So Love this it. Is your first opportunity to send something to space. If you want to fill out a postcard, you can write a message to someone or to your future self, or you can get, give us a drawing of what you think the future looks like, and uh, we will fly to board our New Shepard rocket above the carbon line to space uh, out of our West Texas launch site. When's that going to happen? Uh, sometime in the next 12 months. Okay. We don't have a flight for these picked out yet. It'll probably be sooner than that. But uh, yeah, you put your address on the, on the side of the card, you drop it in the box, and we'll mail it back to you with a stamp of an official flown to space uh, uh, item. Well, I'd be an idiot not to do this. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Thank you're you. You're welcome to grab one to go if you don't want to sit down and fill it out. Oh, no, no. We will sit and do it properly. Awesome. Thank you. So, so yeah, here, this is the coolest thing. So I'm gonna fill out my stuff here, my address and stuff I got, and then I'm whatever you want on the back, and then they'll send it up into space on the next Blue Horizon out of Texas, which like basically that's the same rocket that Shatner flew on um, last year, and they'll send it back to you and say, hey, this was in space, and so that's crazy good, but I have no idea. This is a very blank page staring at me right now, so I gotta think this through. Okay, I think I figured something out. So I got my address filled out here and everything and then my message can you read that I hope so there you go so in my face it doesn't make sense but yeah i'm gonna keep track of this so when i get it obviously i'll make a video of that too so this is so cool i'll have to remember this don't let me forget all right got myself a little sticker I'm gonna wait for my postcard. This is great though, they have like more space displays as you would expect, like a little, there's a rocket club here. Hang on. See, this is crazy. It's got like the gantry and everything going on here. That is so cool. Yeah, one of the advantages of having uh, Kennedy Space Center, like not very far from here, you get all the space stuff. Over here, they have one of the uh, 3D printer companies, uh, Prusa. 
Uh, if you have a 3D printer, you use their Cura software pretty much as the slicer. Pretty much that's the main one that everyone uses. So it's kind of cool that they're here. I'm gonna see if they can help me figure out how to tweak mine better. <laughs> this is great. Of course, they have little prepackaged electronic kits for kids. A little menorah, which is awesome. A little heart. This is so great. As you would expect, no Maker Fair would be complete without Lego. It's the endless train of Lego. Okay, so this is quite remarkable. This this gentleman here brought his telescopes that he does like astrophotography with. And these are his pictures that he's taken. So the Andromeda Galaxy, a couple of nebulas, Horsehead Nebula, North American Nebula. What the heck? This is mental. Let's just take him with these guys. That is so, so cool. But to prove that Maker Faire isn't just like, you know, technology based, I mean, they got somebody over here doing woodworking. Uh, they have some people over here, they're spinning uh, yarn, uh, spinning wool, I should say. It's, it's really, really cool, just any kind of creative uh, process. It's, it's really awesome. Okay, these are so cool. So she hand makes them, and then she does a casting and then hand paints them. These are so... This is so awesome. I'll put her information if you want some of these guys. Because these are so fantastic. Okay, Hatbox Ghost wins, I think. He's the best. Fantastic. I'm not joking when I say this place has everything. This is crazy. Robot. And it's huge. I'm shocked how huge it is. This group from Tampa here does like mini exploratory submarines. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, this is so cool. Anybody remember Lincoln Logs? These are custom Lincoln Logs and with them you can do amazing buildings like this. Mine never looked like this when I built them. They looked more like this. Okay, this is creative art. This is literally art copying life. Like they get all these wafer boards and they just mount them in artistic ways. That is so cool. Well, for us nerdy guys, this is wicked cool, so I love it. I like this one because it's also it's art, but it's also educational. That is so fun. This is great. Like, the kids learn balance and a game at the same time. It's all down here. Almost, almost! There you go. Nice! Okay, so here's something I'm very much looking forward to we're gonna come back for. So these, if you can see them, see these little cars? So there's a kid's size car called Power Wheels, okay? And there's a group of adults out there that basically take these Power Wheels and they basically soup them up so they can race. And that's what this whole track is for. They're doing a race in about a half hour. Needless to say, we will be back for the power racing series. Okay, these two tents are super fun. So basically, you can sign up and you fly a little drone through the obstacle course that's inside the tent. This is so cool. Let's see if we can see somebody doing it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Eh, apparently it's not so easy. Okay, so here's a table that I kind of didn't expect. And basically you come over here and they teach you how to pick a lock. Okay. Sure, why not? Okay, so I like to point out when I find really cool art. So these are like almost like relief maps for Disney attractions. So this is Pirates. 
and it's so cool. So like it has a little key, uh, like where, let's see, where's one? Uh, one would be over here, there you go. There's a loading area, it takes you around, you go past the, the pirate with the wheel and the sand pirate with the crabs. There's your first drop. This is just so cool. So, so cool. I like that. And they got one for Haunted Mansion. This is the one in California though, so this is not the one in uh, Orlando. And they got one down here for Journey into Imagination, which is also very hip. Actually, I wonder, oh, this is the old version. This is the original version, holy moly. Yeah, with the Dream Maker and stuff. Very, very fun. So I'm standing here waiting for the Power Racers race to start, and as you can see, it's starting to rain, so we'll see if we have a rain delay. That would kind of suck. All right. All right, we're getting ready for the race to start. The theming of the car is the best. So we got Ecto-1 here from Ghostbusters. You got Cookie Monster here. You got a uh, Florida man in his boat. You got a John Deere tractor. Um, so that's just like a Corvette right there. Let's see what else is coming here. Oh, there's somebody riding a horse. We'll, we'll see them in a second. Yep, horse. It's got a lot of horsepower, that. I love it. We got a Ninja Turtle car. It's just kind of taking it easy. It's the eyes on Cookie Monster right there. That's the best part, I think. That was a lot of fun. I mean, so the Power Wheels racers are pretty much a staple at pretty much, I think, all the Maker Faire you go to. So, but it's so much fun. Um, yeah, it's the highlight of the day. All right, let's do another pass. I think we've seen pretty much all there is to see, but we'll do another pass through all the buildings and see if we missed anything, and uh, we may wrap it up. Yeah, this is uh, it's pretty busy compared to any other Maker Faire I've ever been to. Pretty remarkable. I have to say, this guy here is selling local honey, and he has a jalapeno or habanero honey that I'm very tempted to buy. I gotta figure that out. On the way in, I saw the boat over here, but I didn't see this guy. This is that's pretty cool. I love doing that. But yeah, you can buy them like there's all I have no idea what it is, but. Apparently street legal. Wow. Very cool, but very modern though too. So obviously this is something on another chassis. But still cool, how, so cool though how it's uh, styled out. All right, with that, I think I'm gonna call it a day. It was a fun, fun morning I got here and it's about it's about three o'clock right now, about time to head back. And it's getting a little warm, so bought some local honey, because bees are makers too, right? Sure, we're, we just kind of skim a little bit off the top. 
Um, anyways, hope you had fun. I definitely did. I'm definitely going to come back next year. Um, Maker Fair runs actually for two days, and this was just day one. So, um, yeah, there's so much to see. It's great. It's definitely a full day thing. So, anyways, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being my friends. Um, it was fun, and uh, we'll see what next adventure we got going. All right. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Don't forget to do all the things. Okay. Bye.